watchword for the week is from Mark chapter 8, verse 29. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. Welcome to the weekly online worship service of the Fries Valley, Yerkesville, and Janaden Hut and Moravian congregations. I'm Pastor Dave Geyer, and we're glad you're joining us as we worship together. Today is Sunday, September 15, 2024. This is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. And today we welcome Sister Connie Kinsey. Connie will be helping lead our service today and she'll be bringing us the message which she has entitled Tongue Tales. And we're grateful to Connie for her help. Two announcements I would highlight. Uh, our midweek hybrid gatherings have resumed every Wednesday at seven o'clock. Folks can participate either in person in room 105 at the Janaid Hutton Moravian Church or online through Zoom as we gather together as a small group and are currently watching episodes of The Chosen, the mini-series on the life of Christ and discussing those together. If you would like to participate online and aren't currently receiving those Zoom links, please get in touch with our uh, church office and we will be more than happy to include you. Secondly, if you've watched this uh, online worship service with any regularity, you've noticed that we have participants from the different churches who play roles in this service, perhaps offering a watchword or prayer or serving in other capacities. If you might be interested in volunteering as uh, an online viewer, we would love to include you. We consider you part of our worshiping community, and we would welcome the opportunity to have you read perhaps a watchword or participate in some other way according to your comfort level. If you would be interested in participating, please get in touch with Michelle Vesely in our church office. You can find the office contact information in the description below this video, or you can go to our website, www.sharedmoravian.org and fill out the office contact form and just uh, let Michelle know that you might be interested in participating and she'll give you instructions and help you through that process and we would love to have you appear in a future video as well. And so now let us quiet our hearts as Connie leads us in our opening prayer. Pray with me. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the honor of being part of your family of believers. Help each of us to make a positive difference in this world. Let us feel your love for us and help us to share that love with all we meet. Feed our hearts with your word. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to me. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. bow with me. Heavenly Father, but who do you say that I am is the watchword for our week. Let us be bold enough to teach people who you are by our thoughts, words, and deeds. We pray for those in need of your help, spiritually, physically, and mentally. 
and for the guidance of our leaders, for those in harm's way and those rushing in to help. Comfort those grieving, new in grief, and those living with years of grief. Let them feel your comfort. We pray these prayers in your son's holy name. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Isaiah 54 through 7a and James 3, 1 through 12. Isaiah, the Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he awakens my ears to listen to those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard, and insulted and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. James 3, 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. But if we put bits into our mouths of horses to make them obey, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, Yet they are guided by a small rudder whenever the will of the pilot directs. So the tongue is small, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts great exploits. How great is a forest set ablaze by a small fire? The tongue is fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and it is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by human species. But no one can tame the tongue. The restless, evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be to this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and black brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about our tongues. Everybody has one. It's a little organ with a lot of power. What can you do with it? Our tongues help us chew and eat. They help us taste. They help us talk. Say hello while you're trying to hold your tongue still. Hello. It just doesn't sound right. Some people can even do tricks with their tongues. Some people can touch their noses with them. Can you do that? Some people can twist them and roll their tongues. Can you? Tongues with a certain shape are more flexible than others. I have a flat, fat tongue. It used to make me sad that I couldn't roll my tongue. So I worked to train my tongue to do that. Here's my tongue trick. I can do that and I can stick my tongue out. I know that's not very impressive. The Bible doesn't talk about tongue tricks, but it talks about tongue power. The words we say can build up people and bring blessings to their lives, or it can tear them down. The saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me, is simply not true. Our tongues can be hard to control. It makes Jesus sad if we use our words to hurt. I wish I could tell you some easy way to use your tongue to help people. The Thumper principle is pretty good. Do you know who Thumper is? He's the rabbit in Bambi that thumps his foot a lot. He says, 
If you can't say something nice, then don't say anything at all. Keep love in your hearts. The Bible says that what's in our heart often spills out into of our mouths. So if you keep Jesus and his love in your hearts, it's easier to bring kind words out of your mouth. Do your best. Keep trying, even if you mess up sometimes. And remember, Jesus will help you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for my tongue so that I can eat, taste, and talk. Help me to spread the love in my heart through my mouth and keep unkind words to myself. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Come now, fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melody, a song that sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, Mount of Thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by Thy help I'm come, and I hope I Thy good pleasure safely to. Today, we prayed the liturgy for education. As a teacher at the beginning of the school year, the words of this liturgy are calming, and they help me put my teaching anxiety to rest so I can return to the job. In contrast, the process of this preaching assignment was anything but calming. As usual, I began by reading the assigned lectionary text. The Isaiah text was great. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. Ah, yes, I like the flow of that verse. Wonder what other text will go with this one. The psalm said, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my voice for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. Hey, this is working. I am gaining a relationship with God. What's the next one say? Then came the James text. Don't be in any rush to become a teacher, my friends. Teaching is highly responsible work. Teachers are held to the strictest standards, and none of us is perfectly qualified. 
We get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouths. If you could find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you'd have a perfect person in perfect control of life. Did I tell you I'm a teacher? Nothing about me or my tongue is perfect. Oh, moving on to the gospel. The gospel shows examples of both types of tongues. The good example, first, when Jesus asked his disciples who they thought he was, Peter answered wisely that Jesus was the Messiah. But then Jesus, but when Jesus told Peter what would happen to him, Peter thought Jesus was surely mistaken about the suffering. And he told Jesus, and Jesus said, get me behind me, Satan, for you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. All right, so four verses, but what I heard the loudest was, we teachers get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouths. Now I realize that this text is referring to preacher rabbi teachers rather than school teachers, but right now I'm not feeling that confident in either area. When I looked at what I thought the message was all about, the assigned text seemed to be saying that what comes out of our mouth and who we serve by saying it is what they're going to talk about. Let's take a closer look at the New Testament text of James. Though the first paragraph freaked me out, it simply reminds us that human teachers are not infallible. Whether we are teaching children or preaching, we misspeak and stumble, so we shouldn't be too haughty. Verse 3 and 4 says, So when you put a bit in the mouth of a horse, you can control the rather large animal with a small movement of your hands. With a ship's small rudder, a skilled captain can steer a massive this vessel. But can we control our tongues? Our little tongue has lots of power. It can build up and it can destroy. And we are all equipped with one of these little beauties. A spark can, can destroy a forest. A tongue is compared to the spark that can wreak destruction. It says that the tongue is evil, out of control, and cannot be controlled by the human whose body it inhabits. Hmm. Verse 7. With our tongues we can praise the Lord and also curse human beings made in God's image. Praising and cursing out of the same mouth. This is not good. What would Jesus want our tongues to do? And can he help us control our tongues? Let's move to the Isaiah passage. It is from the Old Testament. The selection is one of four servant songs found in Isaiah. They describe the service, suffering, and exaltation of the servant of the Lord, the Messiah, or Israel in its ideal form. All four show the Messiah to be God's meek and gentle servant. Isaiah predicts that the servant of the Lord would deliver the world from the prison of sin. Finding this information was a wow moment for me. In my faith walk, I have thought of the Old Testament as outdated pre-love covenant to be taken with a grain of salt. Here is an early introduction to the Jesus who died for us. Wow. It gives me it gives this new text even more meat when we think that Jesus is the one with the well-trained tongue. How much more should we want to emulate this well-trained tongue? And so I'm reading this again. This time thinking that the Messiah is talking and I want to do as he does. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Why is the Messiah talking? Why should we be talking? To sustain the weary. He wakens me morning by morning 
wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. Jesus is awakened and wakes us to instruct us, and we hear him. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offer my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking or spitting. This echoes Jesus' teaching in Matthew to turn the other cheek and Jesus' actions before he was crucified. Because my sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Jesus was not alone, and neither are we. So how do you get that well-trained tongue? John Amos Comenius, 1592 to 1670, a Moravian philosopher and theologian who was known in education circles as the father of modern education, introduced several innovations in education, including pictures and textbooks written in the native language of the learner, learning beginning with simple, and moving to more complex, and the concept that we are all lifelong learners using logic rather than rote memorization. His concept of each of us being a lifelong learner may be appropriate for those of us who struggle with tongue control. Looking back at my high school days, we had English courses called mini courses. They lasted one nine weeks grading period. Each was worth a quarter credit. Four of them earned the year's English credit that we needed. I took a mini course on discussing controversial issues. So here I was, a sophomore with strong ideas in a class of seniors. When the topic of the day was announced, I often blurted out my opinion. One day, my teacher let me know that he was not impressed. He looked at me and said, you are obnoxious. Do you know that when you speak, everyone in front of you rolls their eyes? No one wants to hear your opinion. Now, I'm not complaining about my teacher's tongue. Though I was mortified, he said something I needed to hear. What happened as a result of that day? First, I heard it. Second, I lived through it. I would have disappeared under my desk if it were possible. Third, I changed the way I expressed my opinion. After that, I was much more thoughtful. I began to listen to others before I spoke, and I matured just a little. I made sure I never took another class from that man but my journey had begun and I'm still working on it. I'm pretty sure I'm progressing, but I'm not there yet. Taming our tongue is lifelong work. We need to start where we are. As Comenius said, we need to learn based on logic, building on what we know and not from memorization. I think Maya Angelou said it well, do your best until you can do better. And then when you can do better, do better. Though my teacher pointed out my need to harness my tongue, to get a well-trained tongue that emulates Jesus, I need to look at scripture. What did our Bible verse today tell us? James tells us that we are not always going to get it right all the time and that we can't do it without God's help. Isaiah tells us that our words should build up the weary. We should listen and resist the urge to fight back. I also need to remember from Isaiah, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. It's okay to make mistakes as I progress. And finally, remember what Jesus told Peter in the gospel lesson. We need to keep in mind the concerns of God 
not just the concerns of humans, but we are never alone in our journey. Amen. And now friends, let us wake up every day like one being instructed by you. Let us use our tongues to sustain the weary and let us love God and those he created. In Christ's name we pray, amen.